Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, people have been asking for more on the Faradero. Now the, the reason I kind of backed off a bit on the Faradero is that it's kind of done. I could ride this bike to the MOT centre today and it would pass, at least I think it would. Um, so the, the hard work's done. The main thing I need to look at, the last piece of the puzzle is that it runs fine medium and high revs. But the idle to first third isn't great. And then if you cover up this air hole with something like a, a cover or foam, it goes much better. Now that means the air fuel screws need screwing in or out depending on where they are. Problem is they were both seized and they both kind of snapped. So I can't easily adjust them. Although I did spray WD last time, that might have worked its magic. It might be easier now. So you've got two options now, guys. Okay, Them screws are what control the first third of the throttle and the idle. If they are seized and can't move, then we can take out the idle jets themselves and try and tune them to get them to where the actual screws are already. So for example, this bike needs less air, less air to run better on the first third of the throttle. Yeah, so that means there is too much fuel going through. So we need to minimize the fuel. Have I got that the right way around? They always get this confusing. Yes, so we need to down jet the idle jet. So that the amount of air we've got, basically it evens out and it becomes more drivable. Um, so, the, so for today, I can access them jets because Jake, Jake is kind of in London. I can always get to him or someone at home. Ideally, I want to get to the air fuel screws. Problem with the air fuel screws, and this is the truth, is that <clears throat> when on the bike like this now, there's one there. I, I don't. If, let me see if you can see that. There's one there, just above my finger there, and then there's another one down here. It's actually under there. Okay. What a pain to get to. I mean, that one, maybe I can put the, uh, a ratchet on it and spin it. Maybe I can put a, a flathead ratchet from here, kind of come through here and turn it, maybe. That one, oh, I mean, it's the same kind of deal, but again, that one snapped. There isn't even anything to hook onto. So they're both, they're both kind of out quite far. Um, so yeah, so I think I'm going to pop all the carbs off again and see if I can free up them, see if I can put a slit in that one using the Dremel so that it, um, so that I can adjust it, that would be the best way of doing it if I could adjust it and then restrict some of the fuel, so that would be what side are these jets on, are these idles on, they are on the engine side. So that's the, so what would it be? That would be restricting the air. So I'd need to go in a couple of turns, which makes sense. They seem to be sitting quite far out, to be fair. But basically that's it. Let me pop this off and see what we're working with. Okay guys, so look, let's see what we've got. This one um, was set two and a half out. I think, did I baseline it? In, yeah, so it was set two and a half out. Um, what I'll do is I'll pop that out and give it a good clean. But um, let me make sure that it's set. Yep, half, 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 and half. So that's where it was set two and a half out. This one all snapped, you see, so it's just you couldn't get to it. I'm going to Dremel, attempt to Dremel a, a line in it there so that I can put this screwdriver through this flathead and see if I can get it turn. Um, I believe it has to go in one whole turn and what will that be doing that will be yeah restricting air so that should make it run much better and also I can then restrict it a touch more on the bike if I need to 
it shouldn't be less than one turn from the bottom it shouldn't really be more than two and a half turns out uh, three three really so um let me get that home let me get the dremel on that see if i can put a slit in it see if i can then actually get it spinning and adjusted i have put more wd in there you just gotta do whatever you can i put some in last time uh, i don't think you can easily drill these out i think the carbs ruined if if that doesn't work basically um, now I know it looks like it's in more this one than that one but it's not I believe that's two and a half turns out as well uh, the other thing I could do if I can't get that out or moving at all is I can do what I said I can change the idle jets so I'd want um, so I need to restrict the air I need to work out whether I need to up jet or down jet I can do it um, in my head but I need to just figure that out because at the moment I restrict the air and it runs better on idle so what does that mean it means it's jetted too high I believe so I need to down jet a touch but ideally I'd do it through these screws so that's what I'm gonna do let's see <clears throat> just I'm just gonna dremel a line there see if I can get my, the flathead in see if I can get it loose ideally that's the what I want then I pull it out clean it up put it back in probably set it at one and a half and see how we go from there okay guys so I know I'm in like exactly the same spot but um, I have been home and I have used the Dremel you see I had to put a slit into it and then use a flathead at first it just kept breaking it's only brass it breaks easy um, wiggle it in and out very very gently because you've already put WD in there if you wiggle it left and right the WD seeps a bit lower that's exactly what you want so that's out and free now, that one's out and free now. Um, I'm going to pull them out, give, give them a bit of a clean, and then reset them at one and a half, instead of two and a half, and see if, I'll know immediately if the bike fires up better. Uh, because I had to cover the airbox hole to get it to start up last time. It just had way um, too much air going through it, compared to the amount of fuel so yeah so I'm restricting the air by one turn which is what I've done yeah so um, that's it I'm gonna pop these back in I've got the I've got it down to a T now I get it I get them on and off so quick now which is great fire it up let it uh, warm up let it idle and see how it goes I have a feeling it's gonna run so much better it was close anyway guys but I have a feeling this is gonna seal the deal if that's the case then all I need to do is go over this bike in regards to MOT stuff remember I changed that rear shock which I, I forgot about actually um, I need to check the brake pads I haven't had a look at them yet because I don't like doing all that stuff until the end there's plenty on there at least there's what well, I say plenty there's enough but I will give the caliper a good clean on the inside, I mean. Um, can I see the pads here? Can't see them. I'm going to pop that one off. I think eventually I might pop the front wheel off and give the front forks a coat off. Satin black. I'm going to give the front mud guard a coat off. Probably a contrasting black. Basically going to make this bike look better than it does. And then I've got the new tank over there in the silver now the tanks were always a different color to the panels i believe so that's not a huge issue i'll give it a good polish chuck it on and then i think i think i've got a bike here that's serviced and ready to go i think but i might be talking too soon so let me chuck these carbs on and see we'll know guys we'll know straight away because i haven't started it up for two weeks if it starts up quickly and fairly without me covering the airbox it, um, it should be running 10 times better and it was running fine anyway okay guys so I've done that thing I I do where I just kind of get on with it put it all back together and think yeah you know I'm gonna do it all properly which is what I've done I've put the appropriate screws in it's it's tightened down properly I am gonna put a little bit of tape over these seals just in case but I have sealed it much better the screws are working um, but just kind of in case really the tank hides all of that so there's no worries uh, 
need to put this coolant line across into its area these are just spare overflows they actually go down there towards the back this one actually no you this one where do you go you go somewhere and you go through on to the other side of the car but I know where you go uh, did I take the bottle off I think I think this goes to the bottle um, I really don't think an expansion tanks needed but I, I am going to be putting one on just in case I'm just not sure where it might even just have to be here I might have to color it or something you can buy a little one on eBay for a few quid just a tiny little one just does the basic job let me connect that up um, we're now going to be Oh, I'm going to fire it up. I'm going to put the bottle on it, the um, fuel. Fire it up. It should fire up much better than it did before. I'll know immediately whether this is a happier bike by the way it fires up. So a uh, couple of minutes and I'll uh, turn this key over. I don't even know if the battery's live, so I might have to hook it up. Okay, guys, so assuming there's enough um, battery power, it's ready to fire up. Um, I'll tell you what's going to happen now, after sealing it all properly, it's going to overflow the carbs and lay money on it. They'll all come, all come pissing out over there. Let's, uh, let me fire this thing up. Again, I'll know pretty quickly by how it starts. Um, if it starts better than it has before, it has been sitting two weeks, so it might be a bit touchy still, but if it starts a bit better, um, then I can see fuel spill already, but I think that's coming out of the bottle. Yes, it is. That's it's not a huge concern. Yeah, we're still Bit of choke. Technically restricting the air is just choking anyway. Fuel spill you can see is from the bottle guys, it's not from the carbs, look. It's just running out of here and then running down, so that's fine. I'm letting it warm up a bit. I mean, the fact that it needed a, a bit of air restriction there is kind of what a choke would do. I don't think this choke is working properly. So, I might need to go in half for more turn, but I'm going to give this bike a run in a minute and and see what it runs like. I have an idea, it ran pretty well last time. The other thing is, the actual tank seals this up a bit more. So the only airflow you've got coming in is, is through here, because the tank covers that to an extent. Um, so, yeah, so it might be kind of spot on actually, but we don't know yet. So I'm gonna let it warm up a couple of minutes Take it for a quick spin, see how it rides. I'll put the camera on just for this little uh, bit here. So guys, again, it's closer, but it's not sorted. Um, basically, it needs to start on the button every time, especially when it's a little bit warm. You just, you should just press... You should just press the button and it should just fire up. Uh, we've cleaned all the spark, the spark's good. The spark plugs are new, I remember. I put new plugs in. So there isn't really much left to do. 
in regards to what more I can do. I put the tank on to see if it restricts a bit more air. It's not actually on flowing fuel. It's just on to see if how much it blocks. But it doesn't really look. You've still got all that gap. Um, so I still think... Technically, I still probably need to go half a turn in on each carb. See if that makes a difference. I'm going to try that. I'm going to see if I can get to them carbs. Go half a turn in on each and see if that makes a difference. So guys, I put both the idle screws back in, in half each. So they're both at one now, which is kind of the, the lowest you should go before messing with the actual jets. Um, it seems to start well when warm. It seems to rev nice. It rides nice on the road. I've taken it out. My concern is that it won't start as well when cold. So it's warm. Let's have a look. Right, let's look at the throttles. So, the throttle, the throttle setting. So, one third watch. That red fine, it's a bit slow on the, look, coming back down. Let's go half full. Reds quite well. Again, a bit slow on the uh, old coming back down. Go full throw. So it, so it is very responsive, guys. It is working quite a bit slow on coming back down. I'm going to take a little bit of idle away, just a little bit. Ultimately though, I can take this bike out, I can run it, I can, you know, I can ride it, and it's riding quite well. I still have slight concerns that it won't fire up when the cold. So in a minute I am going to let it cool down for half an hour. I might actually hook up the petrol tank, uh, but that's going to be a right pain, isn't it, if I hook up the petrol tank and then it, it doesn't start. I'll take a bit of idle off again. The idle's a bit weird on this one. I don't know if the um, the wires are too too taut. The idle doesn't seem to do much. Oh, it is doing some. That seems a bit a bit better. The thing is, guys, if someone came now and took this bike out, like if your average Joe took it out, they probably wouldn't know um, that it, it's just a tiny bit not right. Um, and maybe it's just me now. I mean, there's, there's not much more I can do. It does start up. I need it to get cold. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the battery off and put that on charge for half an hour. I'm going to hook up the actual fuel tank now so that we're, we're going down the route of it just being a bike that starts on the button. And by the time the uh, battery's charged, fuel tank's on, it should be cold enough for us to come back and see if it starts fine. Because I know I, I turn it off now, I'll fire it back up, it's no issue at all. So we need to work out. And I, I do just think that the choke system that we looked at just doesn't work properly. But in the summer, you shouldn't really need it. That's that's the uh, the main thing. I could try half a turn in again on both sides. I don't know at what point does that become 
I mean, really, what I should do now is half a turn on each and see what the actual revs do, but it's so hard to get into that if I go in half a turn, will the revs increase or decrease? Let me do that. I'm going to have a little play with that. I'm going to get the little uh, flathead I was using, see if I can work the air screw while the bike's running. So guys, I went in another quarter turn on each. Um, again, it just, it does start fine. Rev seems to be dropping better actually. Oh, a little bit. I think the revs did lift on that last quarter turn in. I think the revs went a touch higher because I set them at a bit lower than that, didn't I? Um, I'm gonna go a touch lower. do what I said guys so I'm going to um, what am I going to do I'm going to put the battery on charge for 45 minutes or so and put the tank on let it cool down see if it starts and runs and rides with the tank on maybe take it for a 15 20 minute spin somewhere uh, or maybe just up and down this private road a good few times so I'm just sitting here having some lunch um, contemplating this Faradero. I haven't really enjoyed this project. It's, it's just too complex, this bike. Having double of everything, two carbs, two cylinders, two barrels, two spark plugs, two coils, on a little 125, I just, I find so unnecessary. I wouldn't easily do another Faradero project. In fact, I, I don't think I would do one. When these bikes are running well, they're great bikes. They're very good bikes. They're great for cruising. They look great. They look massive. Um, and they're, they're sturdy. But it is a pain to have them working to their full potential when you have to manage two carbs on a fee twin system. And, you know, there isn't anything. I could fully rebuild these carbs tomorrow. I don't think it would run much better because it's not really about that. At the moment, if I had the energy, I'd probably pop the carbs off and change the pilot jets because the air fuel screws are in quite far, so they're restricting quite a lot of air. Um, so I think, what would I need to do? We need less air. I'll have to talk to Jake about it. But anyway, it could be good now it could be, I've got this battery on charge, it could be that I chuck the tank on, which is my plan. I'm going to chuck the tank on and I'm going to um, let it all cool down fully and, and then let the battery charge for an hour and then put the tank back on, see how it fires up and see if it will take me up and down the road for a good 15-20 minutes without any huge issues. Uh, one problem there is the the expansion tank isn't on what I'll do is I'll top up the radiator anyway though to make sure it's got all its cooling in there and and that will tell us how the system's working if that's all okay then I'll be painting that front mug guard getting that looking nice putting the front light back on just getting it all kind of buttoned up really maybe another clean off the wheels at some point just a good strong wheel degreaser and uh, and looking at MOT but I, I don't think I'll ever be happy with the way this bike runs. They they just don't run smooth enough for me because of the feed twin system. I'd love to try someone's perfect running one. I bet it feels the same as this. I bet it's me being extra picky. Uh, ultimately as well, I mean, it's probably a 850 pound bike. 
probably as a street fighter, I'd say. May, maybe a grand. I'd have to be confident that it starts on the button every day before I could sell it for a decent price. Um, it owes me about 750 My max on top is 300 always, so 1050 would be the absolute max. But again, I'd have to feel it starts on the button every single time. And it will have to have its MOT, and I'd have to be confident with it. So we'll see how this one goes. Okay guys, so like I said, I threw the tank back on. That kind of is on in its last seating position now. I'm going to give it a good polish up though, after. Should I take this off? People don't like it. Um, yeah, it's going to look much cleaner without that actually. Uh, over here I've got the front mod guard. Someone let me know in the comments, did these come with unpainted plastic front mod guards? Because that's what that is. Or has someone bought a second hand unpainted one? I'll be curious to know. Uh, I'm just going to put some satin black on that. Keep it simple, it will look much better. And I'm going to clean up the shocks where I've got access. Ideally I'd put some black on them but I can't be bothered really so I'll give them a good clean up for now. So that's what I'm working on. Uh, just give it a good clean, use some uh, water and a touch of liquid and uh, good clean first and then I've got primer somewhere I think so I might give it a, a little prime coat and sand it down first and then get on there with the old satin black, get it all done in one hit and it should be, it's very warm today so it should be ready to go back on in an hour or so if you're careful okay guys so I did exactly what I said I was going to do, the batteries powered the engine will be stone cold where's the exhaust here absolutely stone cold it's been about three hours so this will give me an idea now if the bike's running a bit better or not because it will start a touch easier or it won't um, saying that i've put the fuel tank on properly and didn't even switch it on i don't think i think it's now on what i wanted to do is have the fuel flowing for a couple of hours to see if we had any uh, overflow issues but we haven't we haven't had that for a while uh, notice I took the stickers off the bike actually I'm gonna polish this out don't worry about all that that will polish out completely I think um, but yeah so sold in two or three hours I've done lots of tuning today on this bike just to get it to start so this is the test Gamble, Dude, it, I thought what? <sighs> 50, free, 50 quid for free. Right, no fun. choke, guys. Nothing. No messing around. No choke. Just. That's a great sign. That's good going. I'll know now tomorrow if I try and throw it up, but it's kind of all settled. I am. Um, I filled up completely. The bike sounds so much better to me, guys. It's not even warm yet and it's revving like that. I think. I think the bike's in its best. It's been in a long time. Just burping the system at the moment. Uh, I know it needs an indicator relay. Um, some of the brake pads were good, I believe. Some were bad. I can't remember what ones. No, we weren't sure, were we? Was it the back ones? No, the back ones are okay. I was going to pop the front off. I'll do that in a minute, actually. I'll pop the front off and have a look. Give it a clean. Um, let me put the uh, lid back on the radiator hose. And then I'm going to give the tank a polish. Throw the rear fairing back on. Over the next couple of days, I'll be looking at firing this bike up regularly to see if it kind of sits and is okay. Um, there's no reason why it shouldn't be okay. I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll throw the front light back in. I took that out. I don't know if... Um, if we have any brake lights or anything. Tread on the rear brake for me, Sultan. 
Rear brake, ah, fuck, rear brake, rear brake, rear brake. Dude, why is it so close? It didn't even... Oh, yeah, rear brake. Where is it? It didn't even move. Hello? Uh, sorry, yeah, and off. Yeah, and off. Oh, good. Uh, front brake. Front brake. Front brake. Are you pressing it? Yeah. Oh, so there's no front brake switch. And off? No. Alright, so we need to fix why why there's no switch. I'll have a look at that. Um, that could be... Actually, look, one wire is off. Right, that could solve it. What? What's he doing? Don't take him home and cook him. <laughs> Hello. What is going on? He must be on well, eh? He must have bird flu. Um, still down here. Um, there's a bird right here. Literally, um, it's, it's not really doing anything. It's just, it's just observing. Um, even when. Well, yeah, but it's, it's, it's a bit weird. Do you think it's like a like possessed bird or something like that? I think it's just probably unwell. Or just comfortable in our, you know, around us. Yeah, I don't trust this bird. It gives me demon vibes. Nah, he's alright. Look at him. Well, I say that now, but before you know it, 3 o'clock in the morning, you hear birds calling for you. Listen, no birds call me at 3 in the morning, alright? <laughs> Tell me all that. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh, it's literally just like observing you. It wants to learn how to. Do you to think it's the, like the Antichrist bird? No, it wants to learn how to rescue motorbikes. Yeah. And I was just looking at me. I think he wants some of your turtle wax. That's what I'm thinking. It's probably hungry. Oh, yeah, how much did you buy the turtle wax for? Oh, it's about a ten or a pack, isn't it? No. What? It's three ninety nine. Shut up! No, it's not. Tool station. This one ain't. Yeah. I'm sure it's a ten. Where do you buy one. your stuff from? Halford. Yeah, I should probably go to a different store because I, I bought. Well, I didn't bought. I went on the website and saw like three ninety nine. You sure this one? Yeah, it, it literally it said turtle wax on it. <laughs> now it's underneath the motorbike. Yeah, it'll be fine. I like this stuff. It's really good stuff. We took that sticker off, so nice, well. That's going around, yeah, I think it is an unwell bird. It contributes more than you do. It's, it's literally just walking around. It's fine. Yeah, you say that now, but then we're coughing up because we've got corona swine flu, then, then we'll be sorry. I don't think they carry corona, do they? Yeah, they're probably, do. they're flying rats, that's what they are. No, I shouldn't. Anyways, uh, it's all done here again. So uh, the bird came and it's still here. It's like an hour later. Um, we gave it some bread and uh, he feels dehydrated. So we we'll get some water and uh, pretty much having a dinner right now. But uh, yeah, one thing we realised: come to the motorcycle rescuer garage. Not only do we fix your bike, we feed you and drink and give you some refreshment as well. It's like um, a salon. A what? You know those salons that give you like a cup of tea? Salons <laughs> cut your hair, mate. Yeah, but we fix your bike. Well, no, no, technically we don't fix your bike. We show you how to fix your bike. Well, we fix your bike as well. We do both. This thing's alright. This thing's not too bad. I don't know what happened here. You see this? That's like under the clear coat. That's nuts. Slap a tank stick on it and you'd be But you can't do anything, you can't. Yeah, another tank, a black one I've got, yeah. Because you didn't like the red one, did you? That's why I peeled it off. The devil one. Yeah, the devil one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hate it. Just... No, it, it wasn't like, oh, the devil one. It just looked really, like, tacky. It was just, you can't have that mad bit of red on the blue and black and silver bike, really, can you? Oh yeah, what I was going to say, 
Everyone that's watching, does he look Italian? Who? You. Italian? Yeah, I want to know if they... Because I think you look Italian as well. Yeah. Say buongiorno. <laughs> he knows he, he knows he he said no because he knows he looks Italian. <laughs> but if you think about it, yeah, when he had black hair, he did look Italian. What do you mean when I had black hair? What does that mean? I mean, so. Okay, guys. So actually, you know, I wasn't expecting to, but got loads done today on the Faradero. I need to tension the chain tomorrow. It's a bit loose. Obviously, I'm going to be looking at some sort of replacement seat or cover. I've got the front light back on, high beam works like normal, that's, that's all good. Um, I've got all the brake lights working like normal. I need a relay for the indicator, I'll sort that out as soon as I can. Uh, I don't really need the expansion bottle, that only becomes an issue when there's a problem with the bike and it overheats, it, this bike shouldn't overheat. Uh, but So I don't know if I'm just going to cap this off down here so that it would catch any overflow or not do that at all just leave it so that any overflow would just spill out that actually would be okay overall um it just seems okay guys it just seems all right the front mark guard's been painted it doesn't look much different but it doesn't look like it's just come out of the factory um unpainted so it looks better so this is kind of the bike we're working with. I know the, the seat looks terrible, but um, if you ignore the seat, you're actually looking at what kind of appears to be like a big Honda Hornet or something, doesn't it? This side's a little bit better because of the seat ain't as bad. Um, big V-twin engine, or not a big V-twin engine on this occasion. Yeah, I mean, the thing's quite ugly. But uh, I'll get it past an MOT at some point and we will...